Hello and welcome back to my channel. This video is the first part of the video series where I'm going to transform a full suspension E mountain bike to a full suspension E fat bike. Stay tuned. <laughs> As you may know, I have owned probably the world's coolest class 1 250 watts full suspension e fat bike, Max Hurax Dux. I really loved that bike. In practice, I had two different bikes in that one bike. At least here in the central Finland, we have a proper winter uh, with a lot of snow and uh, cold weather. In the winter time, I rode on that bike with studded fat tires and it was perfect for that kind of conditions. I had narrow wheel set with fat hubs for that bike and that wheel set transformed the bike to a normal full suspension e-mountain bike. If you want to know more about Maxu Rockstax, please check this video where I present the bike. I even rode Tahko 60 km race on the Maxu Rockstax with the narrow tires and I got the ninth position I made a video of that race and you can check it from there. Even the bike was very good and I loved it, I decided to sell it. The bike had Shimano EP8 motor. It's commonly known that there are problems with the cranks when the motor is installed in a fat frame. For example, Shimano doesn't manufacture any cranks for that bike for fat frames. The problem is that the cranks loosen and then they may fail off. When that happens, it may damage the main axle of the motor. In my case, the motor was replaced in warranty three times. Two times there was a problem with the cranks and the main axle was damaged. And the third time I needed to replace the motor, there was some strange noise coming out of the motor and I needed to replace it. And the other problem with that motor is that uh, Shimano doesn't sell any parts for that. So if the motor gets damaged, uh, you need to replace the whole motor. So my motor was already replaced three times uh, during the warranty time. So I thought that uh, it won't last very long. And the new motor costs very much and I decided that I'm not going to pay it on my own. So I decided to sell the bike. So now I have been without an e-bike for about one year. I have been ridden on analog bikes and I have been quite satisfied. But sometimes I miss the e-bike, especially on the winter time. It was really fun to go to the woods and try to find some uh, forest machine or snowmobile trail and follow that uh, on the Max Hurax Ducks. I have also done some videos where I ride on the Max Hurax Ducks on the snowmobile trails. And if you want to see that kind of stuff, please check it from there. Also, it would be nice to participate some race on e-bike. Now I have been trying to find a similar bike than Max Hurax Ducks with some other motor than Shimano. The main criteria has been full suspension, modern geometry, uh, which means quite slack head tube angle and of course fat tires. There are only few models that are full suspension and e-fat bike, but usually they don't have modern geometry or then they have the Shimano motor. I know that the Chinese are manufacturing full suspension e-fat bikes uh, with the modern geometry, but they are using Bafang motor, uh, which is overpowered and it's about 3 kilograms heavier than the other motors. One day I got an idea. What if I buy a normal full suspension e-bike and transform it to an e-fat bike? I already knew that it's quite easy to replace the fork to a fat bike fork. But the real linkage would be the harder part. Basically it means that I need to cut the chain stay and the seat stay and weld it to a wider position. I googled it a bit and it turned out that it could be possible. But of course it has to be done by a professional. I contacted Henry Wilkie from Wilkis Weldings and he confirmed that it would be doable. He has a lot of experience of designing and manufacturing different kind of prototypes and he's an aluminium welding expert. He promised to do the work for me. So the next thing was to find a proper bike for the project. Of course the requirement was 
the full suspension and the modern geometry and there was also one requirement for the rear tire and it has to be 29 inch because the diameter is approximately the same diameter than in the 26 inch fat bike tire otherwise I would also need to lengthen the rear fork in addition to widen it. So I ended to this Focus Sum 2 2022 from bicycle.com. The geometry of the bike is quite enduro-like and there is 170 mm of suspension in rear and in front and it's equipped with Boss CX Gen 4 system. The bike came with the SRAM drivetrain and the SRAM code brakes. I already replaced the brakes and the drivetrain to Shimano. The reason why I uh, replaced them is that uh, I have Shimano parts in all my other mountain bikes and it's very handy when I have spare parts that I can switch between the bikes. I also like the Shimano drivetrain because it keeps the tuning better than ASRAM and it's easier to tune. I also like the Shimano shifter more than uh, ASRAM shifter. Originally the cables uh, went through the headset but I don't like that uh, setup at all because the steerer tube can wear the cables and uh, also I'm replacing the fork from fat bike fork to this one from time to time and it's easier to replace the fork when the cables goes traditionally like this. Luckily there was a uh, routing holes uh, already in the frame and I decided to route the cables through them. In this bike there is 148 mm hoop and the fat bike standard is uh, 197 mm. So I need to widen the fork about 24 mm from each side. Naturally when I'm widening the fork I need to replace the rear axle. I measured the three bits of the rear axle and it turned out that it's 1.75 in this bike. When I used some Google it turned out that Konavo has the same treat pitch. So I ordered this Konavo rear axle for the project. Now when the chain stay gets wider it means that the original crank would not fit here and it means that I also need to replace the cranks to a ones that has wider Q factor. It was quite hard to find uh, a fat bike cranks for BOSS system. I contacted Tunturi which is using the BOSS system in its recent fat bike model. But they said that they have also difficulties to find the uh, proper cranks and they cannot sell them for me. I also contacted Samedi reseller and they promised that they could deliver proper cranks for me. I also googled the cranks but it was really hard to find anything. But then I found these Lasko EB11 used cranks uh, by coincidence and I bought them. The Bafang system is using these cranks. And of course when the cassette moves 24 millimeters to the right it means that the chain line would also move. And for that I bought this uh, spider and I also used a lot of Google and I finally found this Gigit R e-dominance spider which should work fine. And finally I bought this Manito Mastodon Pro uh, fat bike fork uh, as used uh, and it just needs to be serviced uh, and I'm going to use this fork uh, on that bike. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the cranks and the new spider on the motor. Okay now I'm going to fit the new cranks and the new spider. First I need to remove the crank. Okay, I guess that the crank is so light that I need to use this extractor. When removing the chain ring you need to be sure that you are opening in it the right direction and there is the reverse thread there is printed that you need to open it to clockwise.
there has been printed 25 to 30 newton meters. I have read that it's not enough and Bosch recommends from 40 to 45 newton meters. So I'm going to tighten this chain ring to 40 newtons. interesting to see if it fits. No, it's not gonna fit. It touches the spider. Even it's not tight yet, it touches there. But I guess that there is some extra material here that I can cut off. So maybe I need to take some tools and take some material off from here and see if it works. I'm not going to take any more off from the spider and it's possible that these cranks are not going to fit but I don't have any use for these cranks if they doesn't fit so I think that I'm going to try to take a piece off from the crank and if it doesn't last then I'm going to try to find some other cranks so I'm marking here spots where I need to remove some material Take some off from there too. Let's try it now. And the recommendation was from 40 to 50 newtons and I'm going to tighten it to 40 newtons now. Now it goes fine, it doesn't touch the crank anymore. Now we will see if the crank is strong enough, but if it's not then I need to try to find different kind of cranks. Then I'm going to install the chain ring and the shield. It will fit. As you can see, now when we widen the chain stay, there is enough space for the crank. And now I'm going to replace the crank from the other side. Okay, this was already loose. Now the 40 newtons. And here is also enough space. Okay, that was all for this time. Next I'm going to bring the bike to the Wilkis weldings and we are designing and doing the modification. Stay tuned and please watch also the next part. If you liked the video, please press the like button. And if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please do that also. And please remember also to press the bell button to get the reminders of my new videos. Thank you for watching. Bye!